welcome to another exciting episode of NYSE Half Hour. My name is Ademefun Ademisola. You can catch us on NYC TV channel 365 and NYC Radio 88.3 FM. The Community Development Service, CDS, of the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, was born out of the need to provide social services in Nigeria. Over the years, the CDS groups across the country have recorded tremendous success in contributing positively to the development of their host communities. In today's episode, we shall be bringing you the Sustainable Development Goals SDG CDS Group in Abuja. They gave a breakdown of their activities and also took time to educate their fellow core members on the benefits of skill acquisition and entrepreneurship development programs they eat and all the aspects of the SDGs. Stay tuned. everyone, my name is Oyewo Ewaulua Jadesola. I'm an indigenous of Ekiti State and a graduate of International Relations from Covenant University, Nigeria. Welcome to the NYSC, FCT, SDGs and Voters Education, CDS. Please come with me as I introduce you to the team members and our weekly CDS routine. SDG! SDG! NYSC! Please, let's stand up for our NYSC anthem. You to be the clarion call. Let us lift our nation high under the sun or in the rain with dedication and selflessness. Nigeria's us, Nigeria we say. Thank you, SDGs and Tim. NYSC SDGs, a happy family of development. We shall live it and preach it till we all see a new Nigeria. Team, we shall be all stakeholders. Together, each achieves more. Together, each achieves more. All the challenge of development. Oh, 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 all the joy of development. Good morning, everybody. Please, let's sit. SDGs, everyone, everyone. NYC, Action. good morning everyone, my name is Wonderful Akombi, I'm a graduate of law from the University of Lagos, I'm from Oyo State. Um, SDG stands for Sustainable Development Goals, put together by the United Nations. They give us a blueprint of what our future could be like when we all collaborate together. SDGs give us the opportunity to have a brighter future and meet the needs of this present world without jeopardizing the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. So we have 17 devel um, sustainable development goals starting from number one, no poverty, to number two, zero hunger, to number three, good health and well-being, number four, quality education for all, number five, gender equality, we have number 13, climate action we have number 14 life below water number 15 stands for life and learned 16 gives us um justice and strong institutions and 17 is partnership for the goals i'll be calling on precious my colleague right now to talk about what and all the projects we've been having as a team thank you I would like for us to give a rundown of all the projects and activities that we've been doing in our CDS. Mid last year, we went to Gishiri, a rural settlement. We identified that their medical health centers were largely underserved and that they did not have quality health care materials and thereby the community members could not access quality health care. So we donated medical relief items and equipment and then we spoke and engaged with the 
people in the community, their religious leaders, and donated those items to enable them to have quality, more quality access to health care. Last year, in the last quarter of last year, we also visited Kabusa. Kabusa is also a rural area. There, as we all know, we sensitize them on malaria and HIV AIDS. We all know that there are about 51 million cases of malaria every year in Nigeria. And about 207,000 people die from it. And that was why we felt like it was very important for us to educate them on malaria and HIV AIDS. Even more recently, our great CDS, all of us, we, ad we identified another project in Taco Market. And then we partnered with Medic Aid Cancer Foundation, which is one of the foremost cancer foundations in Nigeria, which regards um, healthcare, diagnosis, policy and advocacy reforms. So when we partnered with them, all of us, we went to Utako Market and then we undertook a two-week sensitization at the market and we spoke to the women about cancer, prevention, symptoms, and the women were really, really elated. Many of them expressed gratitude as to how much information they had learned. Because breast cancer and cervical cancer are the two most leading causes of cancer that leads to the death of many women, millions of Nigerian women yearly. And we do not just want to talk, because in our CDS group, we don't, we don't used to talk alone. We talk and we ask. No be so. No be so. So that was why we now partnered with Medic Aid. And the medic aid now trained our medical professionals in our CDS group. So they received those training. And on that day, we now conducted a free cancer screening, breast and cervical cancer screening for the women. Because many of these women may otherwise not be able to, uh, not be, uh, not be able to afford the um, medical fees to undertake a cancer screening. And many of them were very, very happy. And about 200 women registered to be screened. And all of us also had fun while doing the project. Did we not? Yeah. Let's give a round of applause for ourselves. <laughs> and now, we hope that for all the projects that we've done, we'll be able to identify the gaps and maybe improve also because we can only keep getting better. Yeah. So we hope that we're going to do under, I mean, we're already having plans on that way to do under projects at the IDP camps. NYSE, Action. SDGs, everyone, everyone. I'm here this morning to discuss extensively or to share some, you know, some light to us as to one of the SDG goals, which is Go 13. As we all know, Go 13 is um, climate action. First and foremost, climate, basically in the layman's language, is just an atmospheric um, environment. And when we are talking of action, it's just more or less like a work done. So imagine the two together. So when we talk of what is climate action, it's just basically um, work done and the atmospheric environment part time. And when we are actually talking of um, the climate action, one of what the goal intend to achieve is one, is to, um, to foster um, urgent action as to climate action and its impact in our environment. And also to strengthen resilience and um, adaptive capacities to climate um, actions and its impact in our environment and also is to integrate climate action measures. Thank you very much. I have been able to see or per se know more about my environment, know the challenges we are facing in Nigeria as a whole, and in my own space, trying my possible best to meet up to all these challenges with a little sensitization and advocacy. And um, I would my advice for the incoming coppers is that SDG is really a great, a very great uh, CDS and trust me, it will bring out your potentials. Things you think you don't have, you would tend to see them come out. I, I per se know that, okay, I'm trying my possible best to start a personal project that is um, sensitization on career talk and also um, security and good health. So uh, still surveying a place, but I think with SDG, you'll be able to achieve, I would be able to achieve all those things. So please, come to SDG. <laughs> I'm very, very satisfied with this CDS, uh, but especially for the fact that uh, I study social work. This is my area. So while in CAM, I choose this CDS personally, so as to enable me to practice what I've already learned in school. So it also avails me opportunity to practice the theories already learned in school because here we are giving the platform, we are out there to really practicalize. So 
SDG is a very wonderful uh, CDS, and I must encourage uh, the, the, the incoming coppers to also avail themselves the opportunity of joining this SDG. One of the goals which I took interest in most especially is the good health and well being SDG 3 because I'm a medical personnel actually, I'm a physiotherapist. And so um, we have indicators for good health and well being. We have, there are a lot of things that are going wrong in society when it comes to good health and well being. We have maternal mortality, child mortality, infectious diseases, communicable diseases that are going rampant and haywire in the society. So what, we, what SDG has actually done and helped me to do because I couldn't do it on my own, I needed help. So, this group actually gave me a platform to boost my the little strength I had to impact the society. So coming to um, um, reproductive health, we have ladies who are not hygienic enough. Like their hygiene is poor when it comes to their menstrual cycle and getting, and it's not their fault because if you if you think about it, keeping up with maintaining the you know getting the sanitary part and the rest of it is not actually easy, especially now. So what SDG has helped us to do or helped me to do is to use the little funding I have with the impact of this, you know, sponsors and everything to help these young ladies and girls to get across to them and distribute this sanitary parts to them at any point we can. And also help them to educate them how to be clean on their own. And maternal mortality, child mortality, when people are ignorant of the fact that when you're pregnant, you just things to do, things not to do, and what not and what not. So as it actually helped me to actually come through with for this as a medical personnel, so it's really helpful. I'm actually happy in the CDS, and I can't wait to do more. When you come to SDG, you, you get the chance to do the things you want to do. You, if you are passionate about education, SDG will give you the chance to do the things you want to do on education. We have, we have, we have so many projects going on. You can decide to go to school to give books, you can donate. If it's health, if you are concerned about health, well-being, water, SDG just have the way of um, uh, accommodating you to do that. So if you, you, you just don't want to spend your service here just collecting money, going to work, you know, just Monday to, Monday to Thursday, you are, you are at work. On Friday, you come to deliberate, you come to think about your society, you come back to think that, okay, what can I give, what can I do to, so that my service here won't just, won't just be about, I wore the copper clothes, I served, but you, you, you we have, uh, when you go for social work, you're happy, you see people. I mean, the day we were going for cervical cancer, I, I saw how happy those women were. They were telling me that, they were telling us that, if you see how much they have to pay for cervical and breast cancer examination, it's too much, but we did it for free. And we see them really coming to say thank you. It's really one thing that you'll be happy about that. Yes, I did something. As an advocate, I have contributed in diverse ways to my SDG uh, CDS. One of them was during the cervical cancer screening exercise that took place. I was the one who came up with the song, the chance to help everyone get along and to pass the message to the people that we're advocating to. The chance goes like this. The caller calls out, your breast is valuable, and then the people reply, it is valuable. The next line goes, we can end cancer, and then they reply, it is valuable. And then the last line is, make them no cut arm, and then they reply, it is valuable. So it's kind of like a lively chance to help people be aware of what we're here to do, as well as get the people, the advocates, who are going out to sensitize others, excited and elated that they are going out for sensitization. I've also been a key member in the Eureka Initiative, which is an initiative that advocates for climate action and sustainable development of our ecosystem. Those have been my key contributions as an SDG advocate. I choose SDG because I'm so passionate, passionate about the sustainable development goals, particularly about the SDG 3, which is good health and well-being. I am a, I'm an advocate for mental health. I'm a mental health enthusiast. And currently, we're working on a project for the IDP camps for skill acquisition and giving of relief materials for those at the IDP camps. So I was one of those who organized, who have gone to do a survey to check what they need from us and then we are putting things together to go visit them in the next two weeks. And the reason why I am passionate about SDG is because um, I have a foundation and I've been doing quite a lot within my capacity 
to render soccer to vulnerable people, widows and old people. So I felt like this is an opportunity for me to learn more, interact with my fellow young people and as well as inspire some of them who, who are here just because oh, they want to know more about SDG. So yeah, it's been an impactful one so far. Um, we had an outreach some weeks back and I also had to contribute my little quota. Going into the market, sensitizing people on cervical cancer and breast cancer, something that I've actually not, um, I've not been abreast of was also the highlight for me ever since I joined the CDS group. Your breast is valuable. It is valuable. We can end cancer. It is valuable. Make them no call time. It is valuable. Your breast is valuable. It is valuable. We can end cancer. It is valuable. Make them no call time. It is valuable. Thank you very much. Welcome back and well done to our co-members. The NYC scheme is indeed galvanizing the great potentials of our youth and is generating the needed community interest towards national development. And this takes us to our next story on skill acquisition and entrepreneurship development of the NYC scheme. During the orientation course, co-members are expected to join any of the side groups and are expected to continue in the post-camp training. Join us as we take you to one of the SAI training centers located at Lukugoma, where core members are undergoing training on floor technology. Sit back and enjoy. viewers, I'm Halima Bello by name from Kogi State, currently in Abuja where I serve. While I was in camp, I was introduced to SAID program, which is Skill Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development Program. It entails 12 to 15 different kind of program and I decided to sign for the interlocking aspect of it. Guess what? It was awesome. So kindly follow me as I welcome you all to the, intro to the training ground. Here we are training coppers on how to produce interlocking stones of different designs. We have what we call the, the, the stone mat, which is a concept, a foreign concept. And here you see the coppers now. They are very busy learning. We have more than 300 coppers that we are training on this. And most of them have even, like, they've started their businesses. Some are getting their businesses. Some are even installing, some of them their parents are building and they are seeking for contract from them, their relatives, engineers. And we all know it's difficult to be into construction business without um, getting something to do. It's a very good skill. Construction is a good skill because everybody is looking for people. People that are building, they want to do interlocking. If not interlocking, they want to do stamped concrete floors. You can see my coppers here, they are busy learning. You know, you see boys. And girls, couples, they are interested, they are doing their practical, they are learning their work, and they come in batches because of their PPA. Some come on the day they are free, like on Saturdays. Some of them, after their PPA, they come, and they are actually learning a whole lot on floor design. It doesn't stop here. We also have sites that we have actually installed these floors. So we have clients that comes after molding it for them, who will still go to their place to go and install for them. The coppers now, they are using what we call the vibrator. Are you getting me? They are into mass production. What you see under here is called a vibrator. It helps to vibrate the, the mold for the material to enter very well. Then you see after the mixing, are you getting me? Then we have a small source of power here, which is just a generator. You can be able to like a, being able to run the engine to vibrate. Actually, it can also be done manually. But because we are looking at large production, that's why we are now doing this. So we always advise them for them to start without waiting for money to buy all these things. They can improvise, they can do manual. But this one will help to increase the volume of production. 
And we believe as they are getting business, they can easily get these things. Most of these machines are cheap. So they are utterly working. You can see them now learning and they are happy. I'm very motivated and inspired by this site program. It has brought out some aspects in me that I didn't really know about, and it has motivated me to go further into construction and building. The plan for the future is to go into real estate, but right now I'm going to be starting with floors. So like, hopefully, but I should be registering my business by this month ending. This NYC has really been like a source of joy and inspiration to me. Seeing the nature of uh, today's world and the nature of our economy today, instead of just after service, just going out looking for jobs, you can just, you were introduced that this could be self-employed, you could be self-employed. So instead of just going out to the labor market, I thought it wise to join them and find something doing. As a civil engineer, this would also be, be so meaningful to me because you could have structures that would demand people having interlock in their house. So instead of employing others, I said, okay, why not do it myself? Then later on in future, supervise others doing it. I'm actually grateful to NYC for this very opportunity because this is not the only thing I'm learning from Jim Curl. They show us a stamp concrete for, uh, floor, we have a 3D, we have a metallic floor, we, we know how to do paint production. And another thing that they did at, out of their own will, out of their own goodwill, is to teach us how to produce the biogas. So this is not a waste at all. Even where I'm doing my PPA, it's also very good. So it's not a waste. And if anyone is thinking of bypassing the NYC, I personally would advise you not to do it because it is a very good advantage to you. I want to honestly appreciate the NYC for this very wonderful opportunity to be exposed to this kind of a skill. This is something that when you browse about it online, the cost of getting exposed to this thing is on a way high, but here we are offered it on a free platter. It's just for you to indicate interest. I'm very, very, in fact, I don't know how to thank them. This is a very good you know, opportunity and uh, we'll make very good use of it. It's not something that requires much capital to start after the program. We are especially grateful to NYAC management for this golden opportunity given to us. And all special thanks to our coach, a very wonderful man, he also tried, he did his best. It's now left for us to implement what has been given to us, or the knowledge that has been planted in us. Co-members creating wealth indeed. My advice for prospective co-members and serving co-members is to take the SAID program seriously as the benefit can never be overemphasized. To make Nigeria great is the collective responsibility of you and I. My fellow youths, wake up and stop complaining. The future is right here. We will be right back. Today on NYSC Tidbits. Jubilation in NYSC Kano Camp as Director General passes night gates with coal members. The Kano State Orientation Camp in Kusala Dam Kare erupted into jubilation as the Director General of the National Youth Service Corps, Brigadier General Mohammed Kaku Fada, decided to pass the night with them. General Father, who inspected facilities on his arrival at the orientation camp, was led by the NYSC Kano State Coordinator, Hajia Aisha Tata Muhammad. While at the camp kitchen, the Director General expressed his delight at the quality of the food being served to the core members and the camp officials. Addressing the core members, the DG congratulated them on the successful completion of their courses, which qualified them for mobilization international service. NYSC Governing Board extols Nigerian Army on collaboration with the scheme. The chairman of the National Youth Service Corps Governing Board, Ambassador Fatima Bala Abubakar, has extolled the Chief of Army staff and the entire Nigerian Army on their collaboration and unflinching support to the operations of the scheme. The board chairman disclosed this when the NYSC National Governing Board paid a courtesy visit to the Chief of Army staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, in his office in Abuja. Welcome back. Thank you for investing your time with us in today's episode of NYC FR. You can always write to us via our social handles displayed on your screen right now, and we will be glad to write back. 
Remember to catch us on NYC TV, Channel 365, and NYC Radio 88.3 FM. Until next time, I am Ademefun, Ademisola. Stay safe. Something.